Okay, so I was umming and ahhing about whether to do this video or not. Um, and I decided, no, I'll just play Fortnite. But Fortnite's on downtime, so here we go, I'm making the video. Alright, um, so I've been having a few issues uh, actually with the attends, trying to teach them how to do the uh, research question, giving me uh, bio questions instead of chem questions. Uh, I've been getting 11s and 12s, giving me standard deviations. Um, what else have I been, been getting? Um, let me think what else is in this PowerPoint. Um, oh yeah, reliability and accuracy in the ISMG when that doesn't make a lot of sense for chemistry. It's more about accuracy and precision. Uh, and so I realized that um, we're just sort of missing an element here. The, the, in IB, we do theory of knowledge. In junior science, we do she, uh, science is a human endeavor. And I think because we la haven't talked about fundamentals, um, I'm getting a lot of uh, sort of weird stuff that pops up uh, in science class because we haven't, uh, it's basically missing from the syllabus any sort of fundamental talk. So here we go, how to uh, improve your SEs and REs because we're missing some understanding. Uh, so epistemology, um, theory of knowledge or science as a human endeavor for what is not present in the ATAR chemistry. Um, so why am I um, talking about these things? Um, I'm talking about these things because uh, students often struggle um, to make it a chemistry one, which is just looking at how chemicals interact or looking strictly, make sure you get an actual dot point of your syllabus that you're talking about. Oops. Um, and uh, this may be uh, less of an issue as you get up to year 12, as you've really fixed it by then. Uh, but what we're, what we're looking at is uh, particle interactions, whereas uh, biology is looking at, at admittedly, uh, a little bit more interesting stuff, whether things die or not, for starters, or they grow or not. Um, but the problem with biology is uh, they interact with each other. I heard rats can laugh, okay? So it, typically, if you try and do an experiment on humans, they'll, uh, you try and hide from them and trick them about what you're actually doing. Otherwise, they'll purposely screw things up. Uh, even things like placebo, uh, trying to do positive and negative controls, they'll still screw things up. All right. Um, so uh, chemistry is uh, about the truth. All right. It's about, it's 100, it boils at this, at this temperature and pressure, and there's really no argument about that. Whereas, um, and that's sort of the era of modernity where there is a right and wrong that can be found. So that's where it comes from. We've moved to post-modernity and beyond that now. Um, so go ask your humanities teachers about that. Um, whereas biology, it is so overwhelmingly complex and interacting positive and negatives and swapping, uh, we're switching predators for starters, um, that it's it's almost impossible to control your variables. Uh, this is going to come rele become relevant in our discussion on accuracy, uh, reliability uh, and validity versus um, precision and accuracy, which is the chemistry, biology, hard sciences. We, we fully control everything, all right? We're looking at non-living things that don't break the rules, all right? Whereas uh, biology, by its very definition, has a whole heap of variation and a complexity that is um, beyond understanding, to be completely honest, all right? Another thing that biology does is it breaks the rules of science. So uh, we do teach you enthalpy in chemistry, that, um, but we don't teach you uh, some very fundamental things in chemistry, which is everything goes towards the lowest energy. Uh, so delta H is negative. Uh, and another concept we completely don't tell you is everything goes towards randomness. Um, so that's uh, entropy, delta S is positive. So you can tell if a reaction is going to occur because either the, um, it loses energy, such as moves from a high energy molecule to uh, this uh, carbon dioxide uh, and releases energy, or it becomes more random, which, which that also does as well. So if we just call this glucose and make it respire. Um, and so that is the nature of the universe to go towards random. Sometimes they fight each other and randomness, it will increase in energy because the randomness increases so much or it'll decrease. They can fight against each other. That's Gibbs constant if you want to look at the formula for it. But basically the whole universe goes to loss of energy and randomness and life itself does not do that. Okay, so um, if you want to just close your ears and eyes for a minute, uh, if you're an atheist, 
I, th I that's why I think uh, you need some sort of religion into science because you need to make sense of uh, life as uh, a supernatural um, occurrence in this world. And if I don't care if you're a Buddhist, because I've looked at some Buddhist uh, writings, uh, whether Jew, Muslim, Christian, the they all have a creation and a flood account. Uh, and they say things like, we're all sons of God, there's the breath of God breathed into it to give it life. Um, so that uh, explains to me personally uh, how biology manages. It is the supernatural in the biology that manages to violate uh, chemistry and physics and why we can't control our variables. All right. All right. You can uncover your ears now. And I don't want to hear anything in the comments or I'll turn them off. All right. Um, so moving on. So that builds on why we need um, huge data samples for biology because of the lack of reliability. It's, it's going to, this will move towards this here, this reliability, accuracy, precision. Um, whereas chemistry and, and physics, it's so controlled. Titrations can just be two, that is fine. Uh, ignoring, including the rough perhaps, or standard curve here where you can just have uh, one, two, three, four, five, there's a line of best fit which controls everything. Um, the only reason we actually do five is because you do experiment so badly that there's a random error, which is um, the uncertainty of your instruments is nothing compared to your random error. So we need to take at least five so we can do an absolute uncertainty of the mean. Uh, so you take your max minus your min absolute value or whatever divided by two, and that's your plus or minus because your technique is so bad. All right, but really it, you should have just been repetition of three or even less. Uh, and so we do uncertainty propagation in the hope that that is the actual uncertainty, but we'll end up doing uncertainty the mean. All right. Whereas in biology, um, you need to take uh, as many values and samples as you can. Stop moving my pen. Um, because uh, whatever the mean is, so I've lost my pen. Hold on a second. Come back, pen. All right. Um, are you over here all right so um say it's like uh, 10 or whatever and this is 11 and this is 12 uh if oh, sorry nine and your first sample's here and then that one's there and the average will now be there or whatever you keep as soon as it levels off uh that's how you know how many samples to take so that's the proper way to get a sample size all right and that can vary and a lot so they just throw the number 10 in there just so that you don't have to think about that or even know that that exists and that's how you do it um and so what we're looking for is not a right and wrong. Uh, we're just trying to find what we think the real mean is. Uh, and so standard deviation, deviation gives us an idea of, of whether it's really fine and we're quite confident that it's uh, close to that or whether it's really spread out. We're not very confident of what the mean is. It's got nothing to do with the truth. Uh, we're just trying to work out a mean, all right? We're trying to work out a value in that circumstance. All right, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So that's why standard deviations do not let us see that in chemistry or physics, all right? Uh, you can still have uncertainty propagation in bio for your instruments, um, but uh, you need also the statistics as well because of the nature of biology. All right, so that's what biology and chemistry are about. That's why they're different. So you need to consider that if you get sidetracked and start, and start accidentally doing biology things in chemistry or start doing chemistry things in biology. All right, so why does the mark scheme ISMG say reliability and validity? Because majority of students are doing biology. So let's use these words, all right? And as you know, biology is so unreliable, we can't control our, our values, our control, sorry. So is it reliable? That's a big question, all right? Um, is it valid? Uh, that's a big question too. Um, does, uh, what, does uh, drinking coffee extend your life or not, all right? There's a huge issues of reliability and validity of uncontrolled variables, socioeconomic, etc. cetera, um, sample size, all sorts of issues. Reliability and validity are major issues for biology because they can't control their values. They also do something that we really hate in chemistry, which is discontinuous data, and they have bar graphs, okay? So I... I usually ban graphs in bar graphs in year seven because you don't need to do a bar graph in bio. You can still do continuous data. 
I say. So because we can control our variable so well, uh, we should get the actual answer. So like 10 plus or minus 5 if it's not very accurate or, or who knows, it might be, say the answer, real answer is like 12.0. Uh, you might get something like 13 uh, plus or minus 2, which would be much better than 10 plus or minus 5. But we know that we're definitely correct. If we do our sums properly, uh, we will get the right range and we will have the answer in there. All right, biology, who knows? All right, you think the means are 12.0, but you could just be off a completely different panel. It could switch mechanisms or some other interaction could come in there. Uh, so reliability and validity, is it, uh, is it really testing for what you think it is? And can you repeat it? Huge questions for bile. Uh, really sort of confused as to, of course, it's reliable and valid for chem. Uh, we just want to know what the answer is and how close we got to it. Uh, so the precision is the plus and minus, the accuracy is there. Now I see uh, it's a little crazy. I see it's gone so far that I've seen these re words replaced, reliability and precision. Uh, reliability as um, precision and, and validity as accuracy. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. I've seen these pictures replaced with those words, which doesn't. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. All right. So don't, um, I know the ISMG says those things. Uh, and for the sake of QCAA, um, I think perhaps you might want to just cover your bases and talk about reliability when you really should be, when you really mean accuracy and talk about validity when you really mean precision, just to keep them happy. Um, I've asked my students just to stick to their guns and I will annotate uh, saying, oh, they've talked about the accuracy, therefore um, it's um, valid and precision, therefore it's reliable. I'll just annotate it for them. All right, that's what I've asked my students to do at current, um, just to stick so we don't get confused because I think QCA one size fits all IMSMG has really um, mixed up people's understanding of, of these two very different subjects, chemistry and biology. All right, so I hope that clears that up for some people. Um, then we get into the fact that English has come into here, which is if you can understand that biology and chemistry are such different subjects, um, how do you think I feel about English coming in? Uh, so illiteracy is everyone's responsibility. So we've had to make time for an RI when we really should be doing um, theory of knowledge or so forth and doing a lot of other things like entropy and enthalpy um, so that people actually understand it rather than this and memorizing organic chemistry that has no mechanism. So that would be my preference. Um, so when you come into... Um, this, this is uh, just trying to improve your English and to keep it um, scientific, uh, we do the scientific method, which means we look at what has been done and then we add to it. So you start with your data and you get to your research question and you'll get a better RI for that because if you try and make up your own question and then try and see what evidence there is, well, if there's not very good evidence, well, you're not going to have a very good essay. So the process the proper process is to start with the data first and it will actually end up giving you a better essay as well. All right, so this is sort of investigative journalism or a, uh, what do you call it, uh, research, um, the background research, word slipped my mind. Um, what's the word? A literature review, there we go. Um, and then you really need to do the experiment. So this is uh, sort of as close as we can get um, this English incursion into keeping it science. All right, now English is very, very different uh, because truth is what people decide on and it changes and it's very liberal um, about it goes from one thing to the other, what's right and what's wrong. Um, and I don't want to go there because we're scientists and so we go just go on the data. All right, we build on what's being done and we don't care what the community says. We don't care... Um, if, the, if the world says uh, the earth revolves around the sun or the earth is flat, whatever, we go purely on science and we don't care what other people say. We just go on the science and that may uh, frustrate you and may have gotten you killed uh, in centuries past, unfortunately. Okay, uh, and English is just not that, it's just not important. You can have, uh, there's plenty of people, leaders in their field, even in Australia that have very poor English. I've met many of them. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the Japanese and the, the, the Germans are getting all the Nobel Prizes in physics and they're not even using English. So, well, they might be publishing in English, um, but 
I'm sure their English is not like a native speaker, or maybe it is, um, but certainly not necessary uh, because I'm pretty sure the fathers of uh, chemistry and physics are all from France, mainly France and uh, Germany. They certainly won't speak in English. All right, so um, I hope that's helpful. I think a little bit of a background understanding on how um, different, very different subjects are and uh, the trouble we're getting into when we just liberally put English into science or put biology into chem uh, will get you into a lot of trouble. All right, good luck if you manage to get through all that. Okay, there's the video. Bye-bye.